Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. But I want to welcome you to our Christmas gathering here at Known Victory Church. We're honored um, that you're here with us today. Um, today, again, we celebrate, as we talk about, we celebrate the hope of the world, which is Jesus coming to earth to fulfill prophecy, to be a beacon of hope, to sacrifice, to wash our feet, and to seek and save the lost, and to love us deeply and die for us. The hope of the world, that our world and our families and people around us are desperately looking for to bring joy and to bring peace. And I don't know if you're a Star Wars fan. Maybe you're not a Star Wars fan, and that's totally fine. Uh, but Star Wars is a, is a movie franchise that has touched the generations. Right? Uh, the first uh, Star Wars movie came out in 1977. And the most recent Star Wars movie came out in 2019. And they only had nine movies in that span. And it took a long time to make some of these movies, and some of them aren't very good. In fact, a lot of them aren't very good. But we still pretend to love them, right? There's, there's so many famous quotes from these movies, these Star Wars movies. But I think one of the most famous uh, quotes uh, in this movie is when Princess Leia is seeking help. She's seeking hope. She's seeking a savior for her resistance that's going against the evil empire that's around them. And, and there's this quote, and there's this message. This, she sends this holographic message uh, to Obi-Wan Kenobi through a robot or through a droid named R2-D2. And the message is really simple. It's this, it's, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you are my only hope. Right, you remember that, that moment? It's, I think it's supposed to be an epic moment, but it's actually kind of not, but like it is, you know? It's like one of those moments that's like, you know, big, but we all know this quote, I think, those of us who have seen the movies, and this, this, this message is simple yet so profound. We need help. We need hope. We are in need of a savior. We're in need of something more. We can't do this on our own. We're not gonna be able to win on our own. This message that she sends to him, and I think some, in some ways, and in a lot of ways, that this is the same message that our world is seeking. The, our world and we are seeking and searching for hope. We need hope. We need hope desperately. And it seems that as every day goes by, it seems that our cry for hope becomes stronger and stronger. A hope in the midst of our circumstance or a hope in the midst of battle, in the midst of war, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of it all, we are in search of hope. And I think I can't be the only one who said that prayer, God, I need hope in this moment. I need hope in this circumstance. I need hope to keep on going. I need hope. We need it because our world is broken. We don't have to search long to see how broken our world is with wars and despair and sickness and the economy and all the things that weigh us down. We need hope. We need something to cling on to. We need an anchor. We need somebody and something that will save us and restore us and keep us here. So the question is, what is hope? What is hope? And the dictionary defines hope as this, as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. I don't really like that definition, to be honest. And I think a more biblical definition or what we can see the scriptures more so teach us is that hope is more like a confident expectation of, that God's, of God's promises and that his strength and of his faithfulness. It's a, it, it's not just we, a feeling, it's an, it's a, it's a confident expectation that what he said would happen, will happen, and the promises he's poured out to us through scripture actually will come to pass. It's not just a feeling we have, it's a, it's a confident expectation that it's going to happen. See, we don't even just feel expectant. We're confident in our expectation in God's promise. And God proved this through his faithfulness by Jesus coming to earth. See, see our hope is not just in something that, that we wish would happen. It's, it's, it's in something that's already happened. See, Jesus came to earth. 
And hope is not just something that we wish for. You might have kids be like, oh, you know, I hope for the new toy this Christmas. I hope for it. I'm wishing for it. It's not just a wish. We don't wish God would do something. We are confidently expecting it to happen. See, hope is not just a feeling. Hope is a person. Hope isn't just something that we feel. It's something that we have relationship with. Hope. Hope has a name, and, and hope's name is Jesus. The hope of the world. The hope that has been talked about for hundreds of years. This hope that was expected for hundreds of years and having people throughout Scripture pointing to Jesus. Hundreds of years before Jesus even came to earth, pointing to the Savior, the hope of the world coming. And we see this in Isaiah verse 9, 6, which is about 700 years before Jesus was born. And we sang some of this scripture this morning. It says this, For unto us a child is born, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What characteristics of our hero? What characteristics of our Savior that he's a wonderful counselor? He's mighty. He's powerful. He's everlasting. He's our Father. He's the Prince of Peace. That's who came to earth, and that's who's here, and that's who's coming. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That is the hope of the world, a hope that is capable and powerful. I think sometimes when we look around us, it can be hard to see hope. It can, hard, it can be hard to see a possible outcome that can be beneficial. But it says he's wonderful. It says he's powerful. He's capable. He's powerful. He's mighty. He's able to do the things that we hope for. See, again, this prophecy was written about 700 years before Jesus came. For them, this was something that they read, they heard, they were prophesied, they saw it, and they said, I can't wait for that day. I can't wait for the day when, when we see this take place. And how many of us know when you read through Scripture, a lot of the people who had this verse memorized totally missed it. They missed the hope. Because why? Because the hope they were looking for was not the hope that was coming. See, they were looking for a, a king to take the throne uh, and save them from their adversaries and they were looking for a battle and war and Jesus come in the name of peace and washing people's feet. That's right, man. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, washing people's feet might be a little bit stinky sometimes. That's what Jesus did. That's, who, that's who's coming. But they missed it. And I really want for us who call this place home, those of us who are listening, those who are followers of Jesus, my hope is that we don't miss Jesus this Christmas. That we don't miss out on, on, on what he wants to do in our families of restoration and reconciliation and love and joy and peace. We gotta keep our eyes on the right thing. Keep our eyes on Jesus. We live on this side of Jesus' birth and this side of the death and resurrection. We live on this side. So we've seen it happen already. So what more hope and joy and peace can we carry this Christmas? Have you noticed this? I've been noticing this when I go into the mall, when I'm driving. There's a lot of people who aren't experiencing the joy of Christmas right now. People butting each other in line at stores. And I'm like, I'm like, I was at the grocery store. I had like three things. This person behind me had 3,000 things, seven carts, right? Like that's what it felt like. Like two Costco carts full. And I'm like, go ahead of me. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I only have two items, but you go ahead. Now, I'm not trying to say like I'm the best person, okay? Because you're like, that's actually not the smartest thing to do. But what I'm saying is let's spread joy this Christmas, Let's be generous this Christmas. Why are we fighting with each other because we, we, we got the wrong price on an item? Or why are we arguing with each other who got first in line at Costco? I'm telling you, sometimes the lines at Costco, it's a scary place to be. That's, it is. I'm waiting in line and this person just starts getting in my line. And the person behind me is like, hey, don't do that. 
I'm like, whoa, right? <laughs> like, like, it's okay, you know? Like, he's just buying some cheese, okay? Like, like he's just trying to feed his family. But at this time, it's, 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 it's so interesting. This time of year just heightens everything. We become so impatient sometimes with people. Christmas morning, I remember there's this video of me, Christmas morning, true story. I, I've never been the best at getting out of bed in the morning. And there's this video, my whole family's ready to open Christmas presents. And my brother's like, where's Dustin? It's on camera, old video camera. And they're like, I don't know. And all of a sudden I walk in, my hair is a disaster. And I'm like slowly walking in, I can barely see, right? I'm three years old. Like, like Christmas does this thing or it makes us do all sorts of things. And let's not miss Jesus this Christmas because we're so preoccupied by getting our way. They're getting our thing. I see videos sometimes of kids opening up their Christmas present and it's a PlayStation, but they have to share it with their brother and they have meltdowns Christmas morning. And it's not just kids that are having meltdowns Christmas morning. Sometimes it's adults because their pancake isn't cooked right. And you say, and we, we laugh because we know how crazy it can be when some of the things that shouldn't even matter become a really big deal at Christmas. That turkey is a little bit overcooked for me. It's like... Just eat it anyway, bro. As long as it's not undercooked, right? That's a problem. Let's not miss Jesus this Christmas. Let's be carriers of joy and hope this Christmas. You know what? Christmas for some people is not an easy time. Christmas for some people is extremely difficult. Because of the memories and people we've lost or things that have happened. And Christmas isn't always the best time of year for all of us. But let's be carriers of joy and hope no matter what. No matter how we feel, no matter if we don't get our own way, let us bring hope to the world. See, joy is a big part of Christmas. And we read it earlier today. It's Luke chapter two, verse 10 says this. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to people. This is the same message that we're receiving, that we've received. Yet the shepherd's response is, as soon as they see Jesus, they go tell the world. They go tell everybody about this hope and this great joy and this good news. But that's not the way it is for some of us. We know the story. We know the hope. We know the joy. But our first response is to not share it with people. It's great joy for all people. Not just a little dopamine shot. It's an everlasting joy that can overcome any circumstance. Joy. We bring good news. What they say, we bring good news that will bring great joy. And the same message is the same message we share today. The great joy that we have access to. We are carriers of this good news and great joy. We carry hope of the world. We carry the message of Christmas. And I think some of us, we need to have the same realization that the Grinch had. This is what he said. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags, and he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. This is hard to read. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas perhaps means a little bit more? There's so much more to this Christmas season. See, Christmas, I've heard people say, you know, the... I don't know, I'm not feeling it this year. And I get it. But see, Christmas isn't about what's under the tree. Do you know what? It's not even about if you have a tree. It doesn't matter if you have one ornament or like my mom, 655 ornaments on the tree. It's not about our career. It's not about Santa Claus or the lights or the tinsel. It's not even about family. It's not even about a turkey. It's not about snow or roast beast. It's always been about Jesus. 
always been about Jesus. It has to be about Jesus. He's the hope. Wrapping paper will fade away. The new video game will become old and the new one will come out. The new vacuum and toaster will probably die. Like our toaster, it's, I don't want to use it. I'm scared it's going to start a fire. True story. Yeah, we still haven't got a new toaster, okay? That's, that's how much it matters. Your new sweater will get holes in it. It'll get old. Your new pajamas might not fit you again next year. Hopefully it will. Everything fades away. But do you know what doesn't fade away? Jesus. The lights fade away. They burn out. We put up our tree this year. It seems that every year we put it out. One more strand of our lights that's on our pre-lit tree is burnt out. They'll fade away. But Jesus never fades away. He is always faithful in the midst of the storm, in the midst of chaos. This Christmas, take a moment to recognize Jesus' presence in the room. Take a moment to celebrate his birth. To celebrate the hope of the world. I want to end with this thing that uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle from Life Church, he posted this on his social media and this is what he says. And I think it's so important for us this Christmas. He says this, someone said something years ago that stuck with me. They explained that Christmas is a magnifier. If things are good in your life, Christmas tends to magnify that goodness. That which is good seems better. A good family seems great. A good party seems fantastic. A good memory becomes an even better one. Christmas magnifies the good, but unfortunately it can also magnify what is difficult. If you're struggling this Christmas season, this Christmas season can almost make the struggle seem more intense. Financial stress is tough any time of year, but in December it can feel unbearable. A challenged relationship with an extended family is never fun. It seems to be accentuated during the holidays. If you normally battle with loneliness, Christmas time may become the loneliest time of the year. He says, as we celebrate the greatest gift in history, our Savior's birth, as we focus on Jesus, worship God for his goodness, his love, his, sac his sacrifice, we are told to magnify him, to glorify him together. He says, what does this, that mean? Among other things, magnify simply means to make bigger. What if you made God a bigger part of your life? Not just on Christmas day, but every day. What if you allowed his goodness, his will, his plans to consume your thinking? What if you made his presence the biggest priority of all? If you're going to magnify anything this Christmas, magnify Jesus. Let's magnify Jesus this Christmas. In the grocery stores, in the malls, in traffic, in our cars, at our kitchen tables, in our kids' bedrooms hours after they're asleep. That's magnified before they, you know what I mean. Supposed to be asleep. Magnify his goodness. Magnify his joy. Magnify his hope this Christmas. Let's magnify him together. And our takeaway today is this. Hope has a name. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. You might be sitting here feeling hopeless. You might be sitting here feeling lonely. Turn to Jesus and he will give you the hope you need. The hope you need to make it through. The hope you need to overcome. The hope you need to maybe have a simple Christmas this year. The hope that you need. He has a name and his name is Jesus. Call on him. He is the hope of the world. And hope isn't just something that happened. It's not just an event. It's something that follows us and goes with us where we go. Let's be hope this Christmas. Let's bring love this Christmas. He is the hope of the world. The Savior, our King, was born in Bethlehem. lived his life and gave his life and he is the beacon of hope that our city needs he's the beacon of hope that our church needs that our families need he is hope 
Let's pray. Father, I thank you for hope this Christmas, for peace this Christmas, for joy this Christmas. God, help us magnify you wherever we go. Magnify your goodness to make it bigger in our lives. And God, we thank you that as we head into this busy season, give us moments to rest and give us moments to celebrate you and celebrate the hope that we've received. In Jesus' name, amen.